Flint, Michigan was once a city known to be a gray area with a booming economy due to the automotive industry. But today, that is no longer the case. When most people hear Flint, Michigan, they think of crime, a tanked economy, and poverty. If the job losses from General Motors leaving Flint wasn't enough. Recently, the city was struck with another horrendous tragedy when residents started noticing there was something seriously wrong with their drinking water. We were hearing that there was lead in the water, um, and that's when we started our research to see if that lead in the water was getting into the bodies of children. And what we found was alarming. We worry more so about the kids, um, because you know how they are, they want to run, drink the water, but we're scared to take showers. Um, cooking is a challenge. I mean, you want to wash your food and stuff like that, so you have to make sure you have enough bottled water around and things like that. I'm telling you, it's a challenge around the house. To meet immediate needs, water drives have been started to get bottled water to the residents. As it became national headlines, countless numbers of generous donors from all over the country, including celebrities and professional athletes, donated large amounts of bottled water. Flint, Michigan. This has been going on for over two years. They have been charging the residents of Flint, Michigan an exorbitant amount of water bill to even get the water turned on. It costs almost $400. And this is what they are paying for in Flint, Michigan. Dan Kildee is called saying, looking down the road, we're going to be needing more state resources and more federal resources to be able to help the children who might have been affected by this. Waiting for the appropriate authorities to help Flint residents to enforce federal law. Due to the contaminants in the Flint River water, filtration was needed in order to make it usable, but the water wasn't filtered at all. The antiquated lead pipes in the city became corroded, leaching lead into the water. The Geographic Information Systems is the system Dr. Marty Kaufman has come up with to map out the lead pipes throughout the city. At GIS Center, what we do is we take data that has a spatial uh, character to it, and all da most data has some type of spatial characteristic, like an address. That's a reference. We can manipulate those data once we know where they're located on a map. Because we're going to look at a block and we're going to say, okay, these homes here, 70% of them are already lead and copper. What are the homes that are missing characteristics? Are they the same age? Are they on a block that has already has a lot of lead? Mm -hmm. Then it's likely that those also might have lead as well. And what's interesting in most cities is that the city is responsible from the main, which is typically in the middle of, the, you know, somewhere in the street, mm -hmm. up into the sidewalk approximately. That's the city's responsibility. From the sidewalk into the home, it's the homeowner's responsibility. Really? Yeah, and what's happened in a lot of cases is that there may have been an entire lead line here that existed that was put in the 1920s. Okay. The city came by and said, well, we'd like to replace your lead service line with something safer. So the city t cuts out their portion up to the curb stop, puts copper in, then asks the homeowner, do you want to finish the job? But it's going to cost you $3,000 or more. Homeowners might not have afforded it. That's right. So then you've got a lead, and then you've got a copper to lead connection here, and that creates a problem too, because the two metals together may be easily corroded in certain situations, and that would cause lead to come into the water supply. And we think that's what's happened in this Flint case, is that a lot of these connections of one type of metal to another different type of metal created in a, in a solution like water, mm -hmm. creates almost a battery where you get a corrosion potential. And when you get water that has the type of, of composition that without, cor without corrosion control, mm -hmm. 
that can leach lead into the drinking water supply, and that's what we think happened. Can you imagine this type of crisis happening to an area such as Bloomfield Hills? Or did Flint's poor economy make it more vulnerable? So, what should be done to fix this crisis? Flint has an opportunity, perhaps, to become a model lead removal program for the entire country. we got to get this stuff out of the environment. None of this is good. The best way to deal with this problem is to get rid of the lead. So let's take, it, let's take this opportunity to perform inventories on these homes where there's likely to be lead and then see what we can do to get rid of it.